Well, how do that, chums, to Zai, captain of the stage, and today, chums, for you guys, in the viewer verse, I'm going to be talking about No Man's Sky. Yes, now, I did a video the other day where I talked about there could be an update on the horizon around the Halloween time. Now, I am thinking that because we've had three expeditions this year, we normally have four. I'm imagining that there's probably going to be another expedition on the cards around October, November time after this expedition runs its course that we're currently on and then redux with inside of December. And that's kind of a pattern that it follows year on year. But that's not the only thing I want to talk about today, chums. Heck no. The main thing I want to talk about today is endgame and what endgame actually means for myself in a roundabout way. You know, you might have a different interpretation of what endgame is. If you don't agree with me, sound off in the comments, please. I'd love to hear what you have to say on the matter. But for me, endgame is what brings you back to play time and time again within inside of the gaming universe. So in Starfield, they have new game plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and each time things are slightly different. Things happen differently. Inside of Starfield, you have that port to bring you back in and to go through it all again because you can do missions and quests differently and there's subtle differences there. But No Man's Sky doesn't really have that same pull. After you've done Universe 1 and you go to Universe 2, it's pretty much the same. There's a slight different generation when it comes to maps and the planets that you might see. It's like when you get to Galaxy 10, Eisentown, that has more lush planets than it has other types of planets. So, yeah, some people would like to just put a home in Eisentown, which is fine. But then after that, it loops. So pretty much, you know, Galaxy 20 is going to be pretty much similar to Galaxy 10. And we've got 250 odd freaking galaxies. And there's not really much draw for you to go through and explore all of those systems. There needs to be a draw for each of the different systems. Now, I did do a video on how they could shrink this down to 16 different sorts of universes and tie them to the portal glyphs. I don't want to go over the same grounds all over again, but if that sounds good to you, it's like, say, if you go to the whale dimension, you're going to encounter more space leviathans and live in frigates and all that sort of shenanigans and live in ships and so forth and so on. If you hit up the Diploglyph in the Diplo dimension, you're going to find larger, more majestic fauna, and perhaps even the E3 Diplo. Anyway, if you like the sounds of that, I put a video up there, and go and hit that. That's, that's the uh, 16 galaxies idea that I put together. Anyways, moving on from that, people, what else would I consider end right, people, game I just cut content. there to have a little sip of my tea. I mean, technically, I could have just sipped it anyway. I mean, this is a cup of tea with Captain Steve episode. Got my own brew of tea. Links in the video description if you want to try the Captain's brew. Heck yes, it's lovely stuff. Anyways, so I was hoping to have more player created content with inside of No Man's Sky. Now, when you go all the way back and you listen to one of the talks that one of the devs gave, they actually said that this was on the actual agenda for Hello Games to create player driven content. We want people like the, this sounds like a buzzword, but we genuinely want people to have individual different experiences. This shouldn't be a game that you play through like a film. It should be a game where you have your own stories, you can tell your friends about those stories, and they've had something different happen. And for us, routes to, to produce that can quite often involve player interaction or alternatively user-generated content. But we want to create a game world that inherently allow, allows those situations to come about. And that's why prop gen and not knowing all the rules and not knowing how everything's going to play out is really important. The only player driven content that we have inside of No Man's Sky right now is base building. We can go and visit each other's bases, do base tours and all that sort of lovely stuff, which is great. We've also created our own hub zones and stuff inside of game. There is a little bit of role play elements. We've got, we've got some of the, uh, the galaxy tours sort of stuff going on as well. Uh, what else do we have? We have lots of different in-game events that happen, like egg giveaways, and I've even done like a, a vector meetup and um, a, an anvil meetup, like ship meetups and stuff like that inside of game. But multiplayer is slowly sort of degrading, and it's very hard to actually hold a player team of four together, let alone lobbies of 32 like they promised. I mean, that just does not happen, people inside the view of us. So... If they could actually strengthen multiplayer and put in some more multiplayer missions that actually have you working as a team, it's like they've just implemented those giant sentinel dreadnoughts that you can attack. You can take them out solo. 
But wouldn't it be cool to have a mission where one of you is going down the runs and taking out all the sort of shields while the other one is focusing on the engines, another one is focusing on fighters, maybe swarms of fighters could come out that they could take out, and another one's taking out the turrets, you know? So there's four players going at it simultaneously on comms trying to coordinate an attack on those giant dreadnoughts. I think that'd be pretty darn cool, that'd be pretty epic. So a few more missions where you have to run them in a fire team, or not, you I mean you could still try and do it solo, but the chances of success is gonna be slimmer, but maybe the wards could be higher. I think they need to revamp all the Quicksilver missions and make it so it's in that sort of setup. You know, if you go into a Sentinel Pillar, one person's given the task to actually take out the nodes around the sentinel pillar. The other person is to focus on the little sentinels that appear. Another person is inter to interact with the sentinel pillar. Or add some other new elements there where you've got to do other things. Same with the vile worm spawn or even giant mega worms. Maybe add in the ability to fight the giant worms while you're taking on the worm's nest and you do it as a team. You know, stuff like that. So daily raids, is that what I'm thinking? Daily raids, weekly raids, and think Destiny. Think Destiny and how they put up their raid system. I'm thinking something a little bit like that, where the rewards are great. They cycle the rewards in and out. So, you know, a little bit like the Expeditions and doing the Redux. A little bit like that in a roundabout way. I also think what they need to add in is some sort of faction system. Now that we've got like the Outlaws, we've got the um, Autophages, we've got Gek, we've got Viking, and we've got um, the Corvax, have faction allegiance where you can actually sign up to these factions and whatever you're doing, whether it's daily raids or whether it's daily missions or the Quicksilver missions or the weekend missions, it all counts towards your faction. And after you've been doing it for a month, you know, if you're logging in daily and doing an hour a day or something in No Man's Sky, at the end of the month, you're going to get a massive freaking reward, a majestic cape or a new skin for your ship or some sort of tint and things. Again, I'm thinking Destiny. But am I trying to push No Man's Sky into a played service? You know, are we going to end up seeing season passes? Is it going to turn No Man's Sky into Destiny? I don't want to go that far. But at the same time, that's what draws me back into Destiny. If I'm going to play Destiny, it's because there's some awesome perks, awesome rewards that are luring me back in to do so. So you have the risk and reward type systems, you know? We've, I think we need a little bit more of that to come in. What else do I think would be driven, player-driven content? Well, just like the bases, it's quite creative. I love showing off my bases to other people, and I love it when people comment on my bases. It's a... a, a yeah, it, it gives you that sense of, you know, that you've accomplished something. It's awesome. How about, you know, like the expeditions that we get where you do, you know, Expedition Area 1 and Rendezvous 2, Rendezvous 3, and you've got all the badges and you can set missions. Well, you, you run the Hello Games driven missions. What if we could create our own custom expeditions with badges linked to some kind of perks? It could just be, you know, a nominal amount of nanites or units or whatever, or perhaps even Quicksilver as a top tier thing. It doesn't have to actually give out freaking massive things. I mean, you could add in perhaps stuff from your own inventory. So if I've got some living eggs that I want to give away, whatever they are, the void eggs, or if I want to give away a pet egg as a reward or something, I could put that in there. Especially from previous expeditions, if people haven't got them, you know, pet eggs from all the different expeditions, that'd be quite cool. Or, or yeah, the living ship sort of thing, or maybe even um, the um, one of those notes to bring in one of the echo camps for people that haven't done echoes yet. It could jump them into that content a little bit quicker. All sorts. If you could make your own expedition, I think that'd be really cool. It'd be, I think that'd be a very cool thing to do. Yeah, player-driven expeditions. Let us know whether you think that's a cool idea. There's other things that they, they're already doing that I would say is endgame content. But the risk and reward doesn't quite balance. It's like the derelict freighters. Now, you don't really want to take on a derelict freighter unless you've got an OP sort of exosuit, an OP multi-tool to actually clear out some of the decks, because some of those derelict freighters are freaking evil. But when you get to the end and you get to the bulkhead computer, you know, it's randomly generated whether you're going to get an S-class tech thing for your actual freighter or not. You don't know whether it's going to be S-class. You've got to run the whole thing first. And people have shared out coordinates now with some really simple ones to run where you're going to get an S-class module. Guaranteed. And people just run those over and over and over and over again. There needs to be some sort of balance to that. The harder the freighter, the better the reward at the end. 
and hopefully the, there's some sort of algorithm tweak to be had there for No Man's Sky and Hello Games to actually implement. But it should be risk versus reward, and it should be balanced, in my opinion. Not just a random numbers game where people are just going to share out the easiest ones to run. For you to get an S-Class module, it should be freaking hard. But after you've managed to get all those S-Class modules into your freighter, and a lot of people are just going to run it once, get the S-Class module that they need and duplicate the fudge out of it, honestly think Hello Games need to lock out and get rid of all the duplication methods. And I know that's going to upset some people, but for it to be gamified, for it to feel like you've actually earned things, I think all duplication techniques should be removed from the game. I mean, after all, you've given us the toggle to chuck it into creative mode, well, maybe if you put it into creative mode to run your derelict freighter, maybe it defaults the freaking rewards in the end console back to a C-Class. And it stays that way even if you toggle it back to be a normal mode again when you get to the end console. You know, whatever you land on, that's the actual game mode that it selects. And if you change it, it pops up on the screen. Changing your game mode will, will take the reward to a C-Class. And if you hit yes, it remains a C-Class. You know, that sort of thing. There's ways and means they can program this in to make it more fair, more balanced, and to stop skullduggery. Yeah, skullduggery in No Man's Sky is rife. I mean, play the way you want to play. But what I'm trying to say is end game needs to feel like end game content. It needs to bring you back. You need to grind for your things. You need to feel like you've earned them. And I kind of feel that that's the whole reason that we're building up to having OP multi-tools, OP exosuits and all that sort of stuff. Game toggles and duplication methods strip all that out. It makes it almost feel hollow or empty. And a lot of people haven't got self-control, myself included. I'm going to toggle that toggle. I'm going to duplicate stuff. If it's in-game, I'm going to use it. So perhaps it needs to be rendered out of game. Maybe there needs to be some sort of fabricator added into game where you pump in nanites and the nanite bots recreate that thing. So if you do want to duplicate something, you've got to use nanites to do it. If you don't want to use time, if you've got an infinite amount of freaking nanites, use nanites to duplicate something. In fact, I made a video on that. I'll put a video up there to my nanite duplicating machine idea. Heck yes, yeah. so if you are going to take away, put something back in to plug that gap. So end game content, I honestly think it comes down to Hello Games to put something in that draws players back in. And I already think they've done elements of that. Back to Starfield, when you land on a planet, it randomly generates you places of interest based on a spawning pool of things that could spawn in. And yes, you're going to see patterns after a while. Hello Games have been doing this for some time with spatial anomalies. As you're flying through space, you can hit on up an anomaly detector and it's going to spawn in something random that you can visually see, take a photo of. Some of them you can interact with, some of them are going to give you resources and things. But it's similar to how they generate the derelict freighters also in a system. And that puts in a whole procedural dungeon. There's ways and means that Hello Games could do this on planet surfaces. In fact, they already have with the Echoes camps, with the new Echoes droids that are appearing on planets. But if they could take a little leaf out of, say, Starfield's book and have a spawning pool of interesting things that could spawn in, perhaps from the Echo location or from this Echo dimension, the realm of glass or the void or whatever, it could spawn in things of interest depending on what you pop. A little bit like the Echo camps, but they could be more interesting, things more interesting, a procedural dungeon of sorts, some sort of procedural outpost that's heavily guarded, you know, all sorts. Take a leaf out of Starfield's book is what I'm saying there. They've copied freaking No Man's Sky in a number of ways. Take a little bit of inspiration from that. Take their ideas, No Man's Skyify them. Stick them into game as end game content. And that's pretty much everything I've got for you people when it comes to end game content. But I honestly think they need to look at the rewards a little bit more. I mean, given us clumps of grass or given us some patches from an expedition, to stick on our walls of our bases is all fine and dandy, but it's very fluffy and wishy-washy. It'd be nice to have some pretty awesome modules that are quite unique or some skins for your ship that you can show off, because it's very rare now that people are going to see these other sort of cosmetics. Even the capes that we get in still remain invisible to this day in multiplayer, which is a right shame. But yes, more of that sort of stuff, showy-offy type stuff would be great, but also more meaningful things that change up the gameplay slightly. 
you know, maybe sticky mines or proximity mines could be a thing that you get. Or the incinerator module. Give out the flamethrower to people or something one month as a reward type thing. And if you manage to win that award, if you can make your own expeditions, you can put it in as a reward in your reward tree. So you actually build up a repertoire, a catalogue of things that you can put into your own custom expeditions from the expeditions or weekend missions that you've run. The players that invest a lot of time are going to have a bigger catalogue, therefore they can make more engagement in expeditions that sort of thing people that's what i'm thinking or even player driven chests so you can get yourself a chest a bit like the ones we find at relic sites that need free keys to open or something and maybe you can bury them somewhere on a planet on your base you could put up a, a coordinate code like an x and y coordinate that when a player goes to they can find your chest unlock it and they get three items from your inventory that you've stuffed in there and yeah, I could put in some of the eggs from previous expeditions. A bit like the previous idea. But I've done a whole ideas video on player-driven chests. I'll put that up there. So a lot of these ideas that I'm putting out there right now are things that I've already spoken about in previous videos or mentioned in, in talks and stuff like that. I've decided to put them all into one video as end game content ideas. And I hope they get picked up. I hope they get looked at by the hello of the games. I really do. But anyway, people, that's my ideas for end game content and my concept of what end game is. It needs to bring you back in to play more. End game, in my opinion, isn't building out a wand or a staff or whatever that does exactly the same thing as a multi-tool does. It just cosmetically looks different and you've had to grind for ages running fetch quests um, that are all too similar. There needed to be far more variety in that for it to have worked well. And also, once you've got your moats, you can duplicate them. You can duplicate your moats so you can get all the staff bits to your heart's consent without even running any other missions. It's it's a bit weird. Or you can put it in creative mode and just keep handing in mission after mission and get as many moats as you need. You know, again, duplication and that toggle switch has killed off a lot of the things that were implemented to probably keep us occupied until the next update. Because I honestly think that's all that was, was a placeholder to keep us busy until the next update. I don't think it's true endgame content. It's just busy building, basically. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Busy work. Yeah, grindy, busy stuff. It's almost like having a second job, some of the stuff that's been implemented. Anyway, people inside the view of us, I'm going to end off now. And But yeah, sound off in the comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you think this video has merit. You can do that by smashing a like, people, sharing it with friends, putting it out on social media, getting the debate going on this. Stick it on Reddit, stick it on freaking Facebook, all those sort of places. Till next time, goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. <laughs>